absolutely loved the film. Um, and David, you and your wife Jessica, who was obviously in the film with you, were in an inter interracial relationship. And I was wondering to what extent was the draw to make this film based on any sort of similarities that you have in your own life? The draw, in, in terms of my own personal marriage, was more about knowing what it is to be in love and knowing what it is to, uh, from a disposition point of view, be prepared to do anything and everything you can to defend that love. Yes, we're in an interracial marriage, but you know I can't really relate to the struggle that they face. My wife and I have not faced that. But my admiration for them is through the roof as a result because there is a world in which in a different place in a different time that would be the obstacles that Jess and I faced so um, yeah there's there's no question that we as a couple look at them and think wow thank thank goodness uh, that's not what we have to endure um, and this film took many years to make with an awful lot of influence from yourself. Uh, what made you stay so determined to, to make the film over those years? Because it's the kind of film that I would have loved to have seen when I was younger and didn't get to see. Um, growing up in the UK, you of course watch tons of period dramas, whether it's on film or on TV, but I never got to see anyone who looks like me in them, certainly not as a protagonist or at the center of the story. And uh, I always knew that, you know, black people did not emerge on British soil and the wind rush, uh, you know, we have been here for centuries and those stories just never get told. And so when I found this story, when it was handed to me by these producers I'd worked with in 2010, they had optioned a book called Color Bar. I became obsessed with it because I, I just, I had, I didn't even realize how thirsty I was for a story like this until I saw the image of Suretse Karma and Ruth Williams holding hands, walking through a, a sort of dusky street in the 40s. Um, and I understand that you were key in both getting Rosamond and Amma on board. Let's mm. talk about Amma first. Why did you think of her to direct this project? I'd worked with Amma about 18 years ago on a show called Brothers and Sisters, and I, I knew her purely as a writer back then. Um, I liked her a lot as a person, but it wasn't until I saw what she did with Belle um, that I thought, wow, she is a genuine candidate for this, not least because I thought she handled so well the um, confluence of the love story and the politics, uh, which is the trickiest thing with a story like this. You really don't want the politics to overwhelm the love story. That would make it less relatable for an audience. Also, because she's of African descent herself, but also British like me, I felt like she would really get um, the nuance of this story r racially. Um, and um, she's an unashamed romantic like me as well. So, uh, you know, she, she was, as you say, a perfect candidate. And Rosamund Pike, who you've worked with before, yeah. uh, why did she strike you as Ruth Williams? Because as an actress, I find her to be very unpredictable in terms of the performances she's going to give. And there is a world in which you have someone playing Ruth Williams who's very obvious, and who doesn't necessarily have the depth and complexity inherently that would make it plausible to understand instantaneously why someone like Suretse Kama would fall in love with her. Because they fell in love pretty much at first sight. It, it wasn't a long drawn out relationship. And so you need someone who is enigmatic enough, charismatic enough, someone attractive enough um, and layered enough that you go, yeah, I can totally see why he fell in love with her. And she, to me, you know, has that in spades. And I read that even speaking to people in Botswana when you were filming there, that some of them didn't actually know the story themselves. Mm. Um, how do you, I mean, why do you think that is? And, and how do you think Ruth and Suretse maybe would feel if they saw the film today? I think it's because um, the, that history was overshadowed by white history. I mean, they know more about David Livingston than they do about Suretse Kama. And even though Botswana overcame a lot of what apartheid imposed upon them as a nation, there was still residue. And there is still, in a lot of African nations where that, that, were, that were either colonized or were protectorates, an imposition of uh, British history 
on their history. And so um, it's been expunged. It's also the reason why we don't know anything about Suretsi Kama and Ruth Williams, why I, as, as a child of African descent, don't know anything about their story as well. And that's the power of film. It can, it can educate and enlighten, which is you know, something I never take for granted as a filmmaker. And just finally, you've played some incredible real roles of people fighting for black rights. To what extent is that you looking for those roles? Um, well, in, in terms of the two significant ones, the other, apart from a United Kingdom being Selma, in which I played Dr. King, um, those were both stories I fought very hard to get told. And the reason being that um, for a black actor, in his 20s or 30s, you almost never get the opportunities that white actors do. You know, you have to wait till your 30s and 40s to be Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, Sam Jackson. Um, and that's because the opportunity isn't there to, to build your profile. And so those films just don't get made. Um, and so, you know, Selma took seven years, United Kingdom took six years. And I just feel if I don't do it, no one will. Uh, because the reason I want to see those films made is because they reflect my experience, they reflect my values, they reflect what I want to see as a representation of what it is to be a black man who's not just, in terms of Africa, a dictator, some a boy soldier, or all the negative connotations of being African, or in an American t context, someone who's on the periphery of a narrative. So, you know, that's why I fought hard for those films to get made, and I'm very grateful that they did. David Oyelowo, thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys!